Hello everyone, Paul from High Tech Legion. It's been a long time since I've personally used mainstream products in my rigs. But I have to remember where my roots came from. That's where I was at before I was fortunate enough to do what I'm doing now. And it was always more of a decision to make between what I wanted and what I could afford. Of course, I always wanted the higher end, but, a, but I could only afford maybe something that was in the mainstream range of gaming products. Years ago, they used to change motherboards and processors and video cards. Probably once every three months, there was something new and better coming out. Luckily, in the past uh, few years, We've had the opportunity to see a little bit of a slowdown of that, where now it's not every three months, it's once a year that we're seeing you know, a brand new product launch or something that's going to, going to actually hit our price point. Recently, NVIDIA announced the launch of their mainstream gaming product, which is the Maxwell GM206. This is the mainstream Geo GPU for Maxwell, the 900 series cards. And we have the Asus Strix Direct CU2 GeForce GTX 960 here that we're going to take a look at. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with the box itself. The ASUS DirectCU2 Strix version. This is a new version. They introduced the Strix with the 900 series. And, of course, they have a new logo, which is an owl up in the front. It's the DirectCU2 cooler, which you might be familiar with, but they've made some improvements on it. And, of course, we'll go over that in a second. So it's a black box, it's got the, it's got the owl on the front, it says GeForce GTX. Of course it's an OC seed card. On the back of the box, basically we have some specifications, it shows some of the product features, etc. Inside of the box is another black box. And of course I don't have the video card in there right now, but video cards in here. You do get a VGA to DVI, and along with that, you do have the ASUS speed setup, setup with a case badge, and, of course, nothing is ever complete without the drivers. So, I mean, that's not that interesting. So let's move on to the interesting part. Let's actually take a closer look of the, at the card. All right. Let's start out with the shroud. As you can see, the shroud is plastic. It contains two 80, 80 millimeter fans in it. These fans are part of the direct CU2 cooling process. These are now zero dB fans. And with direct CU2 for this actual model, if you take a look at the heat pipes here, you have two 6 millimeter heat pipes and you have two 8 millimeter heat pipes which are going through that actually cool the GPU itself. Now the cooling is very good, of course. If you've, if you've ever used an ASUS card with direct CU2 cooling, you're very aware. But this happens to be really good since it's DB. They have it set to turn on between 55 and 60 degrees Celsius. So when the card heats up to that area, the fans will actually kick on. Zero dB means that you don't have to use the fans when, they're, when it's on idle or when you're doing some light gaming. There's another special quality about this card that I want to talk about. ASUS actually through G GPU Tweak is giving you three clock speeds on this. Of course, the end-all, be-all clock speed is going to be 1253 on the base and 1317 on the boost. But there's also a silent mode, which is 1204 on the base and 1267 on the boost. Then you have a gaming mode, which is 1228 and 1291 on the boost. 
So you got three different levels of of performance that you could set this car through using GPU tweak. Now it does have 1024 CUDA cores and it is 2 gigabytes of 128 bit GDDR5 memory and that's set at 7200 megahertz. What's special about the ASUS cards is that it does have what they call SAP or super alloy power. power. And basically that's all the capacitors, the caps, uh, the chokes, the MOSFETs, they're all super alloy so they cool down quicker, they keep, they keep your uh, system cooler and they run more efficiently. It's a five phase power supply on this. So the five phase power supply with the SAP will help it to go through its phases, keep it energy efficient for you and work the way that you're going to want it to. Now, one thing that they added on this card is a backplate. Um, the 970 series Strix that we reviewed didn't have a backplate and it actually kind of made the card sag a little bit because it was lacking that backplate. But with the addition of the backplate, you're also going to get better cooling because you have the backplate here, it's going to dissipate the heat and it's going to take the cooling. It'll take some of the heat out of the PCB. On the front end, when we take a look at the front end, you'll notice that we have three display ports, we have one HDMI, and we have one DVI. It is PCIe 3.0, and it is SLI capable. The ASUS card only requires one six-pin power connector, and on the power connector, there is an LED on the back. So if you have this plugged in and into your system, and just say you're your six pin is not seated correctly. The LED is actually going to show up red. That's telling you that you're not connected. When it turns white, once it's inserted in, it'll turn white and then you know you, that you are definitely connected via that LED. So now you can see with the LED light, if you're, you know, you're wondering why you're not getting video power or something, you got an LED light to actually tell you what's going on. Now another thing that uh, ASUS is doing, and this is going to this is going to be great for those of you who like to share your gaming uh, frags online and stuff. Um, GPU Tweak and of course ASUS as well as XSplit Gamecaster. You're going to, with the purchase of this card, you're going to get one year free of premium XSplit Gamecaster. That's going to allow you to record yourself, put it up on Twitch, do what you want to do, play around. It's a great program. ASUS has you know, made a deal with, with XSplit to give this to you for a year. This is the premium bundle. It's not the free bundle. So there is a price for that, for that. So you're actually getting it free for a year. So that's another good quality about this car. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the benchmarks. And then I'll come back and give you my impressions of the car. Well, performance numbers not bad, not great either. Uh, what we found is that the ASUS, we actually reviewed five cards, which hopefully you've watched uh, and read all five reviews. Um, this is one of the five, five cards that we actually reviewed as part of the uh, GTX 960 launch. This, the ASUS Strix had the third highest 
factory overclock on it. But unfortunately, it underperformed most of the other cards that we tested. As you can see, I mean, you know, you're within one or two frames, but it still kind of underperformed the other cards that we tested. Now, this doesn't take away from the card itself. We have a lot of great technology that goes into this card, and it's also luck of the draw. I've been reviewing ASUS cards. I've used them for years, and unfortunately, maybe I just got one that's just part of the mediocre this time. It doesn't reflect on anything that you might purchase, of course. It's always the luck of the draw. You're never going to get the same. I'm not going to get the same that you will. You won't get the same that I am. We're all going to get different overclocking speeds. We're all going to get different numbers. What we need to focus on is what ASUS did with this. The direct CU cooling is probably one of the coolest. It cooled this processor. Probably one of the best. I think it's the second. Actually, it is the second best cooling that we had. It kept the lower temperatures. Now, I'm going to say second best only because I live in Florida. And when we tested the MSI card, George actually, we tried to keep our temperatures the same, but George actually lives in New Jersey, so it might be a little bit cooler in his home than it is in mine. So it's kind of an up and down here. But as per cooling, this thing basically ran silent the whole time. I didn't hear it. The construction is very well. You're getting the quality of ASUS when you do get it. You're also getting the 0 dB fans. You're getting the solid capacitors. It's something that you should consider when you're purchasing a card. Sometimes it's not, not all about what the performance is. It's how long it's going to last you. And that's what counts. But I will say this, based on our numbers, based on prices of other cards, we're going to have to give this a silver award. It's a great card. It's not something that I would pass up. It's something that I would definitely look at. The price on the card is $214.99. It is an overclocked version, so that's a good thing. It's the third lowest price card that we benchmarked, um, the other two being the EVGA and the Zotac. But the Zotac didn't overclock as well as the ASUS. So you're getting a little bit difference there. And the Zotac did not cool as well as the ASUS. So there's a little bit of a, maybe a buffer there between the price difference. I want to say thank you everyone for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember as always, High Tech Legion has sponsored this review. Stay thirsty my friends. I'll see you the next time. Bye-bye.